So for question 5, we are going to evaluate. So normally when we have the question integration is defined integration, we have value here, uh, our answer also in value. So we are going to integrate this. So we, our question is in fraction form. So we look at our fraction form. Uh, can we use formula? You can see and if we expand this, if we expand our function at denominator, it is x cubed minus x squared. So this, if this is our function, we just try and see, check and see, is it differentiate up here? It's a differential function. So obviously when we differentiate, it's 3x squared minus 2x. So obviously this is not. Okay, so when this is not at that pattern, means our formula cannot work here. Okay, so we cannot use formula here. So when we cannot use formula here, we were going to apply our technique of integration. So we look at our technique of integration for the question which involving fraction, the technique we will use here will be partial fraction. So for our fraction here, before we start performing our partial fraction, we are going to see this is proper or not. So this is linear, this is cubic, so obviously this is proper fractions. So is it the denominator here is fully, completely factorization? Uh, this is completely factorization. Then only we will start split it, split it according to our factor. So we'll take up the fraction and we express it to partial fraction. Then only we do our integration after that. Okay, so we take out the question fraction here. So look at our denominator. So x squared is a repeating. Okay, it's a repeating. It will be x and then x squared. Because x squared means x times x, repeating factor. And then another factor is just linear factor. So we look at our denominator here. When we have linear factor, numerator will be constant. So although this is not quadratic factor, this is repeating, uh, repeating x times x. So still linear. So this one is constant. Linear factor up there will be constant. Then we're going to get same to the denominator. A we're going to multiply with the factor that it don't have. It has x. So we're going to times x and x minus 1. For B, we're going to time x minus 1. For C, we're going to time x squared. So we have three unknown here. We have to let three times. Okay, we can. We have to let it three times to find out what is our unknown ABC here. So we can let x to be our roots. Our roots. We can see our factor here. Our factor here is x and x minus 1. So the roots we can take is x equals to 1. Then x equals to 0. So another, we can use uh, randomly, randomly number. So let's say I take randomly number negative 1. Okay, so from here we only can find two roots. So for another x value, we just randomly pick. Then we substitute our x equals to 1 here. So you get c. c equals to 2. When we x equals to 0, we get b equals to negative 1. So, when we put c equals to negative 1, so you can see this is negative 2 times negative 1, so which is 2a. So, this is negative 2b, and then that will be c. So, we got our b and c, we can substitute in where b is negative 1, so that's why we get positive. So a will equal to negative 2. So this is how we express our fraction in partial fraction. Where a is negative 2, b is negative 1, c is 2. So after that, we're going to solve our integration.
Okay, so we're going to substitute our fraction here into the partial fraction form. Then we're going to value up. So our question originally is in the grid. So therefore, we are going to substitute our new kind of the new pattern of our fraction, which is our partial fraction. Then we will, we will try to try to simplify. Uh, we are going to go through our rules of integration, simplify, that. simplify check on formula, uh, then solve the answer. So like this, x power of negative 1, we go, we're not going to move it up. For this, power of 2, yes, we're going to move it up. So as you can see, actually we can integrate one by one so that you can see clearly if, if I want to integrate this, I will factorize out negative 2. So that you can see yeah, we only integrate 1 over x. It will be more easier to, for you to see. Okay, so integrate 1 by 1. And at the same time, I'll factorize out, uh, simplify the question. So integrate 1 over x. We'll get ln. And then you can see that one that will be power plus one over new power. And then for that, the last part, uh, this is fx, this is f prime x, differentiate x, we get one. So this is in the ln. So three, two. So lastly, we just substitute our upper limit minus our lower limit. So of course when we see here when when you see when you see here ln minus one you can simplify later. Okay. Ln three. One over three. Three minus one, ln two. Minus become positive. Two minus one, ln one. So ln 1 will give us the 0. So this one 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2. It gives you negative 1 over 6. Okay, so this will be ln when you 2 move up to the 3, so 2 to the power of negative, 3 to the power of negative 2, so it become 1 over 9. Sixteen over nine. Okay. So I can simplify four over three square. 
So this is how we simplify in terms of ln uh, without you without pressing the answer in in decimal. So of course for these questions, we look at our questions. It doesn't say anything. It just say evaluate. So actually, when when we finish writing our upper limit minus lower limit, we can accept. Okay. So for this question, we can accept at this point. We can accept straight away. You give me decimal answer. So that will be no problem because it depends on questions. Sometimes the question they say, uh, please write in exact value means that they want the decimal. Sometimes they will uh, just say evaluate, they just want an answer. So no matter the answer is in long form or not, or in decimal, we also can accept. So for this question, you can straight away press the calculator and give me exact value. Uh, give me decimal, which is 4087. So this can be an asset, or you want to uh, learn how to simplify our answer in long form. Uh, so this is how we do. So we see what is important here. So this will be our first mark, expressing our, expressing our partial fashion, and then. forming our equation, finding our A, B, C, that will be our concept. Finally, this is our partial fractions. And we notice that our integration is not so difficult. They just use formula. So this is the concept of integration. Okay, integrate, how to integrate 1 over x, how to integrate x squared, x power negative 2, and how to integrate the so concept of integration. Then concept of writing our upper limit minus lower limit and then to get answer. So this answer can be exact decimal or exactly value. So this is how we get our D7 marks.